Well, here we go. We're going to explore regular polygons, and we'll start with an example of a pentagon. And let's review a few things that we already know. Um, first off, all these regular polygons may be inscribed in a circle. Now, um, we learned this in a previous section of the course. It's pretty interesting, but it does have a lot of meaning here. Um, because this blue circle touches all the vertices, I could draw from the center of the circle to each point on the vertex. Each of these would represent the radius of the blue circle, and consequently they are known as the radii of the pentagon, the radius of the circle on the outside. Okay, let's remember that. Now, I'm going to draw just one triangle. You can see I've got five different isosceles triangles in this case. So let's consider one of them. And I know that in this particular triangle, this is the base. Well, get rid of that circle for now. Um, the base of this particular isosceles triangle is also known as the side. It's equal to the side of the um, in this case, regular pentagon. So, we're going to need to know a new word. If I want to know the area of a triangle, I would like to have base and height. This looks like a base. So, let's generate a height. Now, this height, now we see the A term. The A, we're going to call that the apothem. That's a new vocabulary word for us. It is the height of this triangle. Now when I say this triangle, there's we have five of these triangles, and, and this triangle is formed by two of the radii, and this is the perpendicular distance from the midpoint of one of the sides. It might help at this point to show this. Because in fact, not only are there circles on the outside, but there's a circle on the inside. In this case, the apothem, and you can see there's going to be five of them, um, they are going to connect the mid to the midpoint of any side, and they will be the radius of the circle on the inside. Wow. That's the easiest way I have to remember it. Circle on the outside, circle on the inside. So you've got a radius and an apothem. You want to get to know those very, very well because we're going to do a lot of math involving these two. We know that right now there's going to be a relationship in this case between the radius, the apothem, and half of the side. Now, why would that be? Well, remember, we've got a right triangle there. Okay, so we're talking about this isosceles triangle overall, but we're going to split this in half into a right triangle. And a right triangle right away tells me there's a trig relationship between A, the apothem, R, the radius, and what I'll call S over 2, or half the side of the regular polygon, if we only had an angle. Ah, but we do because I know I could take 360 divided by the number of sides, in this case 5, that yields 72. 72 would be the central angle. And again, central angle, because they we must add up to 360, 5 of them, 72 apiece. Now if I take that central angle and I look at what happens down here, I see that these two triangles are, of course, congruent by, oh, hypotenuse leg, amongst other things. And that means that half of that 72 is going to be 36. So this is going to come up over and over and over with these regular polygons. We're going to take, we'll find the central angle. We'll take half of that to define our trigonometric relationship between these three components. Now each sample will be different, and we'll go through various samples depending on what our given is. 
For example, we could be given a radius, we could be given a side, we could be given an apothem. So we have to be able to work with any of those. All right, so let's see what else we can do. Um, you know, this, I think it's time to demonstrate where we get area. Hang on. All right, let's develop the formula for the area of a regular polygon using this pentagon where we've done all these definitions. And remember, the area of a triangle is one-half times base. We already have shown that the base, in this case, is the length of the side here. That's his, um, or this distance, that is. And we know that the height is, of course, the apothem. And now let's, let's do this. Let's imagine that I take this figure and I'm going to cut it up into pieces. And you can see I can take this pentagon and I can cut it up into five congruent isosceles triangles. Now that's going to be true out of any polygon. A hexagon would have six and say a heptagon seven and an octagon nine and an n-gon n congruent um, isosceles triangles as long as it's a regular figure. So we've got this now that we can visualize it, let's just say, um, let's start substituting. That's a good idea. I'm going to say 1 half base times height times 5 is the area of the pentagon. Let's just rearrange a little bit here. So I'm going to, well, I'll replace the height with the apothem because all of these have the height, the same height, they all have the same base. They all have the same height. That height is the apothem. Now, I'm just going to do a little associative and commutative here. I'll just regroup. And I want to say, let's rearrange, pull the one half on the outside. And I'll say 5 times b. 5 times b has got another name because this is the base. And this is the base. And this is a base. So 5 times the base is simply the distance from here to here. Now, that's got another name. Five times the base would simply be known as the perimeter. So there you have it. The area of the pentagon is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Really, all it, another way of thinking of it is you take the area of one, two, three, four, five congruent isosceles triangles. That works for every single one of these. If that helps you understand it, give that a try. So just one brief note here before we move on to examples. Look here at a few samples of regular polygons, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8 sides respectively. Notice the change as we increase the number of sides. The angle between the apothem and radius clearly decreasing, decreasing rapidly. And the other relationship you can see going from a ratio here where it's um, the radius is double, you can see that the apothem gains and becomes, um, let's say, closer to the radius as the number of sides increases. Some observation that you should make. Let's do some examples now. 